The MVP award is mainly a quarterback award. Since they have given out that award, mostly quarterbacks have won the MVP. So it's a quarterback award. When they talk about the most valuable player, it's the most valuable quarterback, right? Um, but I hate when people sit there and say that this because a quarterback won an award that makes a quarterback more valuable than the other quarterback or that makes the quarterback better than the other quarterback or that makes the quarterback better than the other quarterback all time just because he won the award. You got to understand that the MVP award is factoring to team success, statistical feats as well, and it's not an accurate depiction on who's dominant. It's also factoring narratives too as well when you throw that in there. Uh, we have seen prime examples of where quarterbacks have been getting robbed over MVPs as well, right? We can talk about Drew Brees versus Peyton Manning in 09. Drew Brees that year set the single season record with 71 completion percentage, which at the time was the highest in NFL history. He was elite accuracy, elite in the pocket, generational processor pre and post snap. Drew Brees threw for 4,300 yards, 34 touchdowns in 09. Um, leading a high power offense as well, right? And on top of that, he led the New Orleans Saints to a 13 and 3 record. So the Saints were struggling at the time. Drew Brees was playing at unbelievable heights, unbelievable feats, and he didn't win the award. They only gave it to Peyton Manning because he led the Colts to a 14 and 2 record, and the Colts started off the season 14 and 0, right? And they gave it to Peyton Manning because basically of team success because Peyton Manning had a better overall team than Drew Brees, right? Drew Brees was robbed for multiple MVPs. He was robbed for MVPs in 2009. He was robbed for MVPs in 2011. He was arguably robbing MVP in 2018 as well, right? Drew Brees had zero MVPs. You know who has more MVPs than Drew Brees? Rich Gannon. Rich Gannon won an MVP over Drew Brees. Lamar Jackson has two MVPs over Drew Brees. Are we going to now sit there and say that Lamar Jackson and Rich Gannon is better than Drew Brees? Just because a quarterback didn't win the reward, that'll mean he's not great enough to be able to win the reward. And Drew Brees, having offensive player of the years, multiple years, having had top two MVP seasons, having finished in top five in MVP voting for multiple years as well, right? Just because he didn't win the award because he lost it to other players that had historical season or had great enough season to be able to win the war. That I mean I should tax Drew Brees because he didn't have an MVP caliber season. No, it just narratives and team success is the reason why Brees didn't win the award. And he didn't have the narrative on the side because the Saints was a low market team. Louisiana was a low market team as well. When we go look at the last year MVP race, Lamar Jackson won the MVP award without being top 10 in passing touchdowns, without being top 10 in passing yards, or leading in any major statistical category. You had Josh Allen, who had better overall stats than Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott, who had better overall stats than Lamar Jackson, or even Brock Purdy, who had better overall stats than Lamar Jackson as well, right? But the reason why Lamar Jackson won the MVP award, because they love storylines, they love narratives as well, and they gave it to Lamar Jackson. Not sitting there saying that Lamar Jackson wasn't fit to win the award. I think Lamar Jackson had a top five to top six season as well. But I don't think Lamar Jackson that season was more valuable than Brock Purdy, Josh Allen, or even Dak Prescott because they had more load to do within the office and with talking about turns of passing the football as well, right? Brock Purdy. I think Brock Purdy had a real, real significant case on winning the MVP. But what did they did to Brock Purdy? They sat there and said, oh, Brock Purdy, the reason why you're not going to win the MVP is because we're going to tax you, even though your stats and your statistical dominance throughout the totality of the season, which plays a part for you winning the award, is look on part to being top two or even number one up there with Dak Prescott and even Tua Tagalovlova as well, right? But the reason why we're not going to give you the MVP because you're stacked roster, right? You have Chris McCaffrey, who is also a top five MVP candidate. And also you have that stacked offense with elite O-line, elite running game, elite play calling, and great wide receivers between Brandon Ayuk and Demio Samuels and George Kittle. So we're going to tax you on your support cast. Also, Brock Purdy, we're going to use narratives, right? Since you played bad against the Baltimore Ravens when that was a primetime game against another MVP guy, right, and Lamar Jackson as well, we're going to use that game against you. Since you played bad, we're going to use that game against you to sit there and say you don't deserve the reward. 
But meanwhile, you can use that logic for any other quarterbacks that are in running of the MVP award. Even for Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson had a bad game against the Colts. Lamar Jackson wasn't that good against the Houston Texans as well. Right? Lamar Jackson wasn't good against the Pittsburgh Steelers. We can use games where Lamar Jackson didn't play good to sit there and disqualify him from the MVP award. Right? But they try to tax Brock Purdy for sitting there having another MVP candidate um, and having a great offense weapons and stuff like that as well right and use a narrative because he played bad in one game right um that he shouldn't be the mvp but meanwhile if we fast forward to this season today everybody is saying that lamar jackson should win the mvp right meanwhile he has another guy in derrick henry who leads the nfl in rushing yards he leads the nfl in rushing touchdown averaging his career high in yards per attempt as well who's elite between the tackles lamar jackson got elite O-line, who has one of the best pass blocking O-lines in the league, right? Who has one of the best play callers in the league, who has elite wide receiver core and Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Isaiah Likely, and Mark Andrews as well, right? They didn't use that against Lamar Jackson. They didn't tax Lamar Jackson uh, supporting cast like they did Brock Purdy last year, right? And they didn't sit there and say, oh yeah, Lamar, you can't be MVP because you have another top five MVP candidate, which Derrick Henry, with the numbers that I just put up, that he's been playing at a top five MVP level as well. So the inconsistencies and the way that people judge the MVP award, it to me, is just crazy and it's just insane. The MVP award is not the accurate depiction on who's the more valuable quarterback, who's the better quarterback as well, because in fact, we're in on team success near to the MVP award is starting to get watered down. It's not really that good whatsoever. And at the end of the day, the MVP awards is just starting to get flawed. It's a flawed award. Like this season, I think Joe Burrow has been the best quarterback in the league. He's been elevating, floor raising this Bengals offense who have no running game, who has a terrible O-line as well, right? And even though Joe Burrow has great wide receiver weapons with Jamar Chase, who's a top five wide receiver, T. Higgins, who's no lower than a top 25 wide receiver as well, right? He has good weapons within the wide receiver core as well, but he has one of the worst offensive line and the worst running game and still elevating that offense to a top five offense in the NFL as well, right? And when we're looking at quarterback quarterback play, we got to look at Joe Burrow's ability to play the quarterback position, elite level process, elite level accuracy, elite level consistency that he's been playing with as well. And he's been peaking this season, right? But the only reason why Joe Burrow is not going to win the reward is because his team is bad. He has literally one of the worst defense in the NFL, right? And he has... Uh, um, no defense consistency whatsoever and has flawed coaching so at the end of the day he is not going to win the reward because it's factoring on team success but my point is sitting there and say that's why I think the reward is flawed because at the end of the day let's focus on the individual let's focus on the impact a quarterback brings within the offense football is the ultimate team sport we shouldn't equate a quarterback and solely put it on them to win the games when it has to factor in on coaching special teams and then the defensive side of the ball if a quarterback can be able to elevate a offense at great levels or at elite level as well right while also producing statistical dominance within the passing attack value to the passing game as well right and be able to ceiling raise or full raise an offense to at an adequate enough level then i think he should be a large consideration of the reward but at the end of the day using team success and team stats to sit there and say that oh yeah the quarterback has those statistical feats, but also his team is winning. Well, it just tells you that most of those quarterbacks that have won the award has had better teams. Lamar Jackson won the award in 2019, had a great team, balanced team. Lamar Jackson won the MVP award back in 2023, had a great team, had a balanced team as well, right? And had historical defense. You're not going to win an award if you don't have a great team, which factors on the GMs being able to build around um their teams as well right so at the end of the day the mvp award is losing its value it's starting to get watered down there's no way that a guy like drew Brees had zero mvp and then rich gannon and lamar jackson have two there's no way that drew Brees have zero mvps and cam newton has one or matt ryan has one it's just the award is flawed and doesn't make sense whatsoever